In today's video, we're taking a look at 10 more native Apple M1 games that run under the ARM64 architecture. I've talked about this RPG game, Baldur's Gate 3, on Mr. Macrite so much already, so I'm sorry if you're sick of seeing it, but it's currently the best game to show off the graphical power of your M1-based Mac, and all the latest tech supported in the Metal 2.3 framework. Baldur's Gate 3 was actually the first game to be kind of native on M1 by Steam in July 2021. You see, when you launch the game from the client, you can either choose the ARM or Rosetta version. The Rosetta build has full Steam integration, while the ARM does not. This will be added in a future patch. The ARM and Rosetta versions get quite similar performance between each other. You can play at 1080p, ultra or high on 16GB memory configs with a decent frame rate. The ARM build is currently only supported on 16GB M1 configs though, as this build requires 10GB of unified memory. This will hopefully be fixed in a future patch. If you're a 90s Mac gamer, you should know of this puzzle adventure called Myst. The original Myst was created on Macintosh computers in the early 90s, in particular the Macintosh Quadra 700, using the HyperCard software. The game pushed the possibilities of the hardware at the time, and some of you may laugh at me for saying this, but so does this 2021 remake. The new Myst features the iconic game's worlds fully created in free roam 3D environments using Unreal Engine 4. It's a gorgeous looking game. Myst is one of the few high-end games that can handle 4K resolution on M1 comfortably too. To play at 4K, you'll have to lower the quality preset to medium and switch the super sampling quality to performance. Or you can play at 1080p, epic quality, and super sampling and ultra quality and get 45 to 60 FPS. Note, the native version is only available on the App Store and Steam. The Epic Games Store has not been updated yet. On the 18th of May 2021, Agent A, A Puzzle in Disguise was updated to version 5.3.5 which added native support for Apple Silicon devices. To be fair, this game runs fine under Rosetta, in fact, the game can run great on Macs back to 2012. It doesn't feature really any complex scenes. However, the main benefits of the application being native is for the long term as Apple starts to put more focus on the new M1 based architecture. Agent A, a puzzle in disguise is one of the best point and click puzzle games out there, even though it was a mobile game first. And I think it's really important to support smaller games like this one moving forward. Note, the native version is only available on the Mac App Store right now. On the 1st of September, Feral Interactive brought Total War Rome Remastered to the Mac App Store and made it a native M1 application. Feral told me the native version will come to Steam when the game's next major patch drops. Originally released in 2004, Total War Rome Remastered at the core of the experience is still just Rome 1, but with new mechanics, features and a highly modified version of the original Rome Total War game engine, featuring improved graphics, textures and higher resolution support. Every Apple M1 based Mac can play this game at 1080p high settings and get 45 to 60 FPS. Or if you want to enable the Ultra HD textures at 1080p, you'll get 30 to 45 FPS. Players can also enjoy 4K resolution, but to do this you must lower the quality to medium settings. The native Mac version of Space Space Startopia, it's a tongue twister of a name, is only available on Steam right now. The ARM version would not launch for ages until Valve recently updated the Steam client on M1. To be fair, I have not played enough of this game to fully judge the performance. It's just not my type of game. 
that I would enjoy personally. But so far it plays pretty well at 1080p, ultra settings with about 30 to 60 FPS, or you can play at high for a smoother frame rate. As important as it is to, you know, make noise for AAA games on M1 or small indie games being updated to the ARM architecture, I think it's more important to see these classic Mac games, which are now open source, being updated for modern Mac hardware. Originally, GZ Doom was running under OpenGL and was 32-bit, but then I think in 2020 it was updated to 64-bit, and then in July 2021, this Doom source port was updated to ARM, with support for Molten VK running on top of the Metal API. So far, it's the only native M1 game that actually supports Vulkan. If you want to see what FPS the game is hitting, open the console and type in vid underscore FPS1. You can get this game and follow my install setup in the video description. I've always wanted an excuse to play Getting Over It, and now I can, because it's native on M1. You see, on the 12th of May, yeah, the game became native on M1 via Steam. But to be honest, the performance isn't great, especially for the complexity of this game. It doesn't really feature very complex scenes. And it was made in Unity too. But I can't give a full analysis as I've been stuck in this stupid pit for like 30 minutes and I just I just can't deal with it anymore. I just I don't want to. Hopefully this performance can be improved in a future update because it really should be able to do much better. You're going to come to find this list is full of a lot of uh, games, old games being updated. And Neverwinter Nights is another one of those. The developer has been great at updating the game over the years. From running under OpenGL as a 32-bit application, then being updated to the Metal Framework as a 64-bit application, and now making it native on M1. Just note, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is not native by default on Steam. You have to enable the ARM build. To do this, go to the game's properties, then betas, and select build 8193.33. The graphics are obviously not amazing by today's standards, but it's one of the best RPGs out there, and the main story is like over 40 hours, even more if you're a completionist. I wondered when Blizzard would update World of Warcraft Classic. Well, it wasn't until May 2021 that the game finally saw an arm build. To be fair, the game ran great through Rosetta before, but now that it's native, you can put the graphics to max, except for Shadows and SSAO, put those on high instead of Ultra, and this is all at 1080p with MSAA times 2 and the frame rate should hardly ever drop below 60. The native version of EVE Online has been in the works since late last year. Right now it's available for M1 users but in beta. You can get the EVE Online client from either Steam or the game's official website. When you launch the client, make sure you choose the Singularity test server to access the M1 version. This game has pretty insane performance, especially for the amount of stuff that this game has to render. It supports 4K resolution at high settings and gets 30 to 40 FPS, so you'll probably want to play at 1080p to get a locked 60 FPS. Also, if you want to see the in-game FPS counter, press Ctrl and F on your keyboard and it will magically appear. Okay, here are some bonus native M1 games from Steam. The reason why I haven't included them on the main list is because they have been packaged incorrectly to the Steam client, so Steam isn't opening their respective native versions. For these games right now, you'll have to open them from their root folder to activate the native version. Battle it out in roguelike deck builder Rogue Book, a must have for anyone interested in deck building. Make your own towns in Townscaper. There is no real goal or gameplay here, just build and have a good time. In Timberborn, the humans are long gone and the animals have taken back the land. Enjoy a quality made city builder 
that sets itself apart from others with a quirky art style and unique premise. OpenTTD is a business simulation game in which players earn money by transporting passengers and cargo via road, rail, water and air. This game also offers an open source native version from its official website. Scourgebringer, if that's how you say it, is an amazing fast paced 2D action platformer. It's like Dead Cells meets Celeste. On the 2nd of September, Sir, You Are Being Hunted was updated for Mac with a native 64-bit version for both Intel and Apple Silicon platforms. The game store page still hasn't been updated to show, you know, the Mac little icon, but I imagine this will come in a future patch. What do you think of this next list of native M1 games? There are a few more AAA games from Baldur's Gate 3 and Total War, but I'm really happy to see more indie games being updated for M1 too. You always gotta support those type of games guys, so keep it up devs too. Anyway, leave a like if you found this video useful and subscribe and turn on notifications to see when I post the next episode of this series. My name's Dewey and thanks for watching.